What's going on, everybody? We're back. Hard points. Our next episode, episode three, is now live. We're going to be walking you guys through uh, what to expect leading into CDL London. And as we get in, I know a lot of you guys watch on YouTube, but we are now hosting the podcast. Search for hard points on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Play. You can find us all there. Download the podcast and uh, make sure you guys show us some love. Do it. So, do it. I, BTB I do on top. Preface. I want to preface this entire show to say that I cannot be held accountable accountable for anything I said. I have been. You doing a disclaimer I, now? Oh no! I've gone from dude. I've gone from central to east to west to central. I've been in the all over the country, four different places in the past week. I do not feel very normal. So you you won an Uno said, game. Well, you didn't even. You did play. great in Uno. You played I, Uno and you won forty thousand dollars. So there's no excuse. I well, I, that, that doesn't help me feel less stupid. I'm just telling you. I was having a conversation with Cat earlier, and I was literally fucking up every other word. Like I was not speaking well. So <laughs> I'm just saying, like I, I cannot be trusted. Very all. all right. Oh, all right. Well, leading into this episode, guys, uh, we're gonna talk about how excited we are for London. Basically, uh, the last time we were there, the crowd was absolutely phenomenal arguably the best crowd we've ever had at a competitive Call of Duty tournament. So first off, I, I guess everyone go down the line. How, how excited are you guys? How rowdy do you think the crowd's going to be? Do you think it's going to be the same as the last time we were there? Yeah, I mean, I, I think without question. Uh, I haven't heard anything about ticket sales, but it's hard to imagine that it's not going to be crazy. Every single time that I've been to London, the crowd has been nuts. They're all hammered. They're all loud. Uh, <laughs> it's obviously like a cultural thing. Um I'm going to have to listen to the Shut Up Maven chant, which I like love, but also hate, but mostly love. I uh, love it. I do love but, it. <laughs> no, it's. Uh, I, I don't see how it won't be nuts, man. It is every For single sure. time without fail when we go to London. Yeah, no, I agree. Back, I, I would just say from like my point of view, sorry. Um, no, you're good. Like we talked about it last week with how Minnesota was with the fans and it was the first time there and what sort of atmosphere is created off of that experience like the next time we go to minnesota the goal is is someone is going to tell someone like how much of a great time they had and they're, they're going to bring them along i imagine with london it's that times two right it's the same thing for anaheim for me where like all of these guys are like dude you have to come get hammered with us drink beer we're gonna sing songs we're gonna chant and we're gonna have a great time cheering on the london royal ravens and i i think sure. that is yeah like double that because of how crazy of a year last year was. Like I, I just, unless people have like work and this and that, like I don't understand how the same people that were there last year aren't there this year and they bring one or two people with them. It's actually funny. It made me think of a conversation. We had a you know, post-production meeting. Everyone talked about what we can improve on. It was really, really a great call uh, just to, you know, moving forward to fix some things. And one of the things we're talking about is how to obviously clean up the series. So there's a little less downtime between games. And one of the things they were talking about is, just maybe only doing like the walkout, the full walkout for like the home crowd. Like maybe that was something special we did for launch weekend. Yeah. And I kind of agree because it takes a lot of time when you do all those walkouts. And if the crowd's not into it, some of those shots were kind of cringy. I think yeah. we can agree. But like if there's one place that like I feel good about doing walkouts for everybody, it's yeah. probably London. Seriously. So I was like, I messaged one of our producers. I'm like, if we do get ahead of schedule, this would be the place to do walkouts. Because I think the crowd will be bananas for whether it's in a bad way booing people or getting people hyped. It, it's, it's a good it's talking a good point, to too. We, we highlighted on a previous episode how stoked we were that Minnesota showed up for the home team, right? The one thing I want to see future crowds kind of work on is more energy for the other matches, too. And I feel like we're going to actually get to get that for London. I think no matter who's on the stage, no matter what type of interview, the crowd's going to give a solid reaction and actually be into it for the entirety of the event, the event and not just the home team when they're up on the stage. So yeah, I'm, so. I'm super excited to see that. Uh, I think the crowd, you guys already said it. We we saw how it was the, the last time. I remember we'd walk up on stage and it would just <laughs> erupt. And that adrenaline, it, it was just, you don't get that feeling from from anything else, really. So, Chris, what's your craziest match out. in London ever? I'm curious. What's your craziest European match, Chris? Well, the 100 these ones were pretty nuts last year. Oh, that's yeah. true. Yeah. And they were, it was the bad side, too. Like, they were on the opposite <laughs> was, end. I was, I was getting told to get the F off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting I told some crazy being, things walking up on that stage, man. Yeah, that I remember crazy. being in the crowd and, like, Kenny's, <laughs> like, sister was being yelled at. Like, that's I was like, friend. I was Wait, like, yeah. guys, I, I remember I was in this section, like, the players, not them. Like, chill. Like, this is family and friends. Relax. Like, I get it, but <laughs> chill. So, yeah, hundred Chris, they were on the opposite end last year. So, yeah, I remember, no, that, like, was a, that was a tough crowd, but it was awesome though. 
I remember was, walking up the stage and half the crowd's like, yo, dude, let me buy you a beer, bro. I'm just yeah. like, dude, how, I'm like, that. these guys are into this <laughs> stuff right now. He's like, Here, here's it. a cup of piss. Yeah, <laughs> I, I wasn't getting mad. I was getting told to get off the stage. I suck at my job. We're going to lose. Oh, I my God. Lose. I was like, there was a few people that Savages. obviously were behind us, yeah. but it wasn't definitely not the majority. We were not very liked at that event. But I mean, if you ever asked me, like, what event, if you're going to one COD event, you know what I'm saying? And it was like for the crowd. And if you could go to London, you know what I'm saying? If the budget worked and everything, I would tell you that you go to a London event, like period. Like that would be my number one recommendation that in Anaheim, historically speaking, I think those two events were like the two big ones in Call of Duty history yeah. where like, if you yeah. ever had one, you would do it. And the reason also, this isn't London, but when I went to ESWC right after I won champs, that was also probably my favorite crowd as a player because especially back then in 2015, oh, yeah. there was no chant and let, except for let's go up. That's all you ever heard. And when we walked on that stage, like it was, it wasn't me as much as like Clay, but like Clay was getting a chant, denial was getting a chant. And back then, like denial esports getting a chant ever is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like it, it was pretty cool. So I, I would definitely say that like going to one of these events out over in Europe is just like so wow. recommended. And I think now with how Minnesota showed up, I honestly think London's going to be like we got to kind of show Minnesota that they can't. Oh, 100%. in the crowd, you know what I'm saying? Like, I so I, yeah. I think it's gonna be pretty cool. And I'll tell you who will never get cheers again denial. Uh, yeah, yeah you're not fine. wrong. <laughs> I had to throw that one in, didn't you? But <laughs> and and the LG guys, right? I mean, well, they're not getting any cheers. Is either. Seattle here? Yeah, Seattle's gonna what have do we a rough think of event. LG? Good luck, <laughs> Good luck <laughs> Seattle. You're gonna have a rough one. <laughs> oh man, I can't wait for it. So, uh, you know, leading in, obviously. The launch weekend was in a tournament format. We're switching over to the tournament format now. The four teams that aren't going to be at the event, since it's going to be only eight teams at the event, the teams not going to be there are FaZe, Rocker, Mutineers, and Optic. So we're going to be split into two groups, Group A and B. We'll walk you guys through the groups, those round one matchups. Uh, ba one of you guys basically describe how this bracket or the group bracket is going to work and how the rest of it's going to work. Uh, I mean, I can do it in the sense of it's kind of what Joe and I have wanted for a long time. Um, if you've ever been frustrated with tiebreakers, like with the round robin champs groups, that is solved here. We're finally doing what's referred to, I, I guess, most commonly like when two year in or GSL yeah. would be the more common phrase from like Starcraft back in the day. But basically, it's four team groups. You win two year in, you lose two year out. Imagine like that little. Group of four is like a little double elimination bracket is the easiest way to explain it. So uh, there won't be any weird tiebreakers. You won't have to worry about any of that. Um, you'll have four teams move on from that, and that's four-team bracket single elimination. So that's really all there is to it. It's, it's pretty straightforward, but it should provide a lot more electrifying moments than the yeah, first schedule we saw. A team's going to go 2-0. They're going to be in. A uh, team's going to go 2-1. Well, two teams will go 2-1, and, and then... Or yeah, a team will go two and one, and then one team one and two, and one team zero oh and two. So, yeah, you win two, you're you're uh, in the playoffs. You it's lose two, you're, you're, you're not win. in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, awesome. So leading in, we have Group A and Group B. Uh, I guess we can walk through the the individual matchups that are gonna that are gonna happen in the round one of each particular oh, group. Can, can I touch on something real quick before we talk about the matchups? Of I course. Saw some confusion on go so, for it. Some confusion on Twitter. So. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but people, some people were wondering like why this wasn't seated. Don't view, this is a little bit different than like your typical tournament. Cause like some people are like, Oh, well, if this team went two and oh at launch week and why aren't they the first seed? This is meant to be like a hybrid hybrid between like that first schedule we had, which was all remember when there was no tournaments, it was all league matches. Right. And now like a tournament mode. So they're trying to mimic the first round matchup each week and each place we go with like what the league matches would have looked like. Like it's not a perfect system. There's no way to make it completely balanced, but it's pretty damn cool how the hybrid breaks down. So if you're wondering why like it's not seated, it's because yeah. it's not like the same as like a regular tournament. It's the mimic league matches, but in tournament setting. So just to clear up any confusion, because I saw a lot of questions about that. And also it's a good yeah. way to avoid seeing those same matchups match on, yeah. a, on a week by weekend basis yeah. right that would just kind of get boring if you <laughs> imagine if you were like the last team, team. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah exactly you double bops like every week because so i think i think it's going to be very exciting to see you know it is sort of i don't know random seating is the correct way of saying it but you're going to see different matchups in the round one it's going to give different teams an opportunity against a potentially a weaker or stronger opponent depending on how the teams are looking so i'm excited to see how it goes so i guess i'll throw up the uh the group a bracket right now we can look at the round one matchups in group a you can see right there on the screen dallas versus seattle 
and Chicago versus the LA Gorillas. So, uh, lopsided, not lopsided. What are your guys' thoughts on these, this round one matchup in Group A? <laughs> What's turn. going on? Dude, he's trying to go through the damn door, bro. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I think, uh, I think they're closer than what people would have expected before Minnesota. Um, like I think if you saw Dallas, Seattle, you'd probably be like Dallas easy. I, I still think Dallas wins. Um, but with what we saw, obviously Chicago and Atlanta, what are we think they're the two best teams. I think we're going to see a better Dallas, but I think Seattle will always have competitive matchups because of their team. My issue with Seattle is just going to be S and D. Um, and we and saw Dallas Dallas. Are good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the right. only the Dallas looked solid in S and D. Uh, the other one, Chicago gorillas. Again, if it wasn't for Minnesota, I would have said this is probably a, a, a pretty clean three zero for Chicago and it still could be. Um, uh, but I was pretty impressed with what I saw from gorillas, especially in search and destroy, right? They were one of the four teams or whatever that didn't drop an S and D. So, mm -hmm. Um, I, I do know I have been watching like some Chicago streams and they've been skipping their 2 p.m. scrim for S and D practice. So they obviously know that's a weak point, uh, especially going into like I think a format like this is where that can get taken advantage of. Um, so I, I think Dallas and Chicago win these first two, but I think they're closer than than I, I would say before Minnesota. For sure. I uh, think I think the competitive level of all these teams is is fairly closer than what we thought going into the launch weekend. I guess another talking point too, when we're talking about the LA gorillas, obviously the optic change happened, the fan base majority switched over to the Chicago, right? Oh, that's true. Is there yeah. still tension between Pat and that fan base? Is that different now? I yeah. feel like there still is. There's gotta be right. So is Pat going to bring, you know, th that extra fire, that extra passion into that matchup? Will he not care as much? It's an interesting talking point, in my opinion. He, he, he's definitely going to care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He hates he, him. He, Look at his tweets the other day. Yeah, yeah no, he's definitely it's <laughs> the same thing. Just because they're not the optic gaming, like, typical green wall, it, it's the same thing. They, they're going to, he's going to come in with the same exact pattern. He wants to be that guy. To that fan base up. He, that's like what he lives for. I feel like Pat literally lives for that, like in this gaming scene. So I feel like he'll definitely do that. I mean, those two matchups, I mean, Joe kind of, I agree with you perfectly. I, I think it comes down to the search and destroys. I think Dallas and Chicago are obviously favored. Uh, I think Seattle and Dallas. I think Seattle's obviously a good team. They have a lot of talent. And if they come out and show the same search game that they showed at Minnesota, they have no chance. But, like, <laughs> yeah. if, I mean, if they do their due diligence, right, they work on what they needed to work on. I, I mean, I, I said this before. I think they have a lot of potential. So it really comes down to showing up for Dallas. I, I think this is where we'll see the real Dallas. I think they came out in Minnesota. They had two pretty hard matches. They went 0-2. And, and I was watching, I forget who they were scrimming the other day. And I was watching them play, and they were winning maps online. It wasn't Chicago. And, like, the chat was kind of saying how, like, oh, if this was on land, like, they wouldn't be winning this. And it wasn't against, like, Chicago. So, like, I, I feel like people are giving them too much flack for going 0-2 at Minnesota. I yeah. think they still have a lot of talent. I think... They're still one of the better teams, and I think this is where we'll really see it. If we don't, then that's when I would start worrying if you were a Dallas fan. You know what I'm saying? Or a yeah, Dallas player. Sure. Like, you put a lot of weight in this CDL yeah. launch weekend. Yeah, when, if they don't get out of this, yeah. this group, that's when I get... I, that's I think when I would sure. yeah. But I think if they show up, they should, they should do what they do with the search and destroy. I think they have the clear advantage, but we'll see. Do you guys think there's as much, like, coming into... Obviously, the last weekend we talked a lot about Krim versus Skump. Do you think with Krim and Karma, there's as much of a story there as wanting to just destroy each other or not so much? No. Aren't they pretty friendly, though? They're, yeah. they're pretty I, I think, friendly. They're close yeah. as far as I know still. so I don't think either of them really think like that for, for each okay. other. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know. I'm sorry, guys. One second. It, it very much sounded like it was sort of like, uh, like Krim felt like go of like Skump and Hector and formal type thing. Yeah, I didn't really get the vibe that him and Damon had much like bad blood there. I don't, you know, yeah. I don't, I don't think that's a matchup that will. That's more of like a friendly, I want to beat my friend kind of thing. I, I'm sure they I tried to get on but, teams. I'm sure they yeah, tried yeah. to get on teams together, but that's okay. uh, probably a big, big part of people's payroll, so that probably just can not work out. High profile players for sure. I need to yeah. see a lot more. We talked about Dallas. Like if they struggle here, that's when you start to have the warning signs. I mean, Seattle, I was expecting, I was I, I was praising them a lot going into Minnesota, and they kind of looked like crap. They didn't look as clean as I thought they would uh, for, you know, all the veterans on that team in Respawn. Obviously, their search and destroy woes, we, we expected it going in. It 
showed up just like that too. So like if they have a, a bad showing like that again, the, again, if they if it does come down to a matchup where they have to rely on a map five out of all these four teams in this group, like you got to think they're screwed, right? So yeah, the, the coaching staffs, the players got to come together and and you can't just keep making the same excuses well, when your team looks dramatically worse in a given mode. So the warning signs need to go up for, for the surge too if they struggle. Yeah. No, and I think if they lose to Dallas, there's a good chance they start like 0-4 kick things off which is yeah kind of nuts considering those players it's just it's just wild because like at this level now and, and these guys have been around for so long like they know it's the the small little tiny details yeah. that are the biggest differences they've won championships like i the fact that they probably went into like minnesota with minimal S D practice in it and their excuse could be because it was league matches or whatever it is but that's just like it's like asinine, right? Like mm -hmm. they know what it takes to be on the top level. They've all won titles. So oh, I don't know. Like we, oh, we ranted yeah. about it last year. Like you cannot not practice search and destroy at this level. You just can't. It doesn't make any sense. So hopefully they're practicing. Yeah. I'm sure they are. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure they are. With they, they've all won multiple titles. They know what they're exactly. doing. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and I then, mean, then we'll see. The one thing I would say about the roster is as much practice as SD2, like, some of the players on their team, like Enable, like specifically, like have known to just not be good at search even with practice. Yep. But like, obviously, like Enable specifically too has won multiple titles and being on some teams, even on a uh, hundred thieves, was good at search at a point in time last year too. So like, yeah, it's just really how effective is the practice going to be and stuff. I have faith in them, but yeah, you definitely want to come out here and start very, very strong if you're Seattle and show it. And if you're not going to start strong, at least show like really, really significant improvements in. Right. Yeah search and destroy because Dallas yeah. is still a tough team if they were to go out and lose a Dallas but it was a 3-2 last map and they won the round first 11 or something it's like yeah. round 10 okay round you know nine. like yeah, you're it's going not the end of the world you yeah, can you tell you don't want to just yeah you don't exactly I, I you want to play a good series I think Seattle's gonna get smoked too I just do I think Dallas is like I don't know I thought they handled the losses maturely at least from like ownership and from the players yeah. like I, I think they're gonna come out and, and pound Seattle I do I, just, I, I, I talked to Huke after they lost actually uh, I think it was the next day, and I was just asking him how he, fe he was feeling, and he unfazed. He didn't yeah. care. He well, was like, if, if you're gonna lose cared. anywhere, it's there. Yeah, like, yeah. He yeah. cared. Obviously, I'm not saying he was like, oh, I don't care. It's league matches. No, I'm saying like he was just like, yeah, you know, like we came out, we fell short. We're gonna go back to the lab and grind. You know what I'm saying? It was not like a typical player being upset with their teammates. Oh, we didn't perform on land. Like there was there was nothing of that. It was just like, yeah, honestly, like, we we fell short. We're just gonna go back and do our thing. So. For I sure. mean, I don't think that those losses really affected them. I don't think that's going to, they're going to come into here and be like, oh my God, we have to perform on land. I don't think that's going to be the mindset. I think they'll be fine. And for uh, a talking point too, is like, I, I feel like domination was definitely a stronger mode for, for the empire going into CDL. Obviously those changes with the neutraling and everything happened. So like, I don't want to say teams were playing domination from scratch in, in Minnesota. In a way. But oh, it they basically were. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was pretty close, right? So I feel like a team like Dallas is going to be able to fix and, and realize those trends of why they were struggling on, on the new version of domination, too. So expect them to uh, bounce back pretty quickly. I have high did, hopes for them. Did the multi cap thing get changed? Can you stack now? Is yeah. that a. You can update it? Stack. You still can't? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it might be one of those things that has to be like through a title update too, because I know sometimes the right. updates like it can't be as hot of, fixed. As of now, clearly, right. well, clearly it couldn't be hot fixed or would have been ready for the tournament. Yeah. So it must be yeah. one of those things they have to wait for an actual patch. But we should probably, for time's sake, move on to the next one. Yeah. Does anyone though? I, I know you talked about Pat versus Chicago a little bit, mm -hmm. but does anyone? I, I think this match is a bigger deal than it looks like on paper, because I think like on paper you just think Chicago's going to smoke them. But I think I said last show we did that. Chicago needs to start strong, and I think they need to win for multiple reasons. One, because I think Seth is going to play remarkably well if they're if that team is doing well and he's motivated, which he's locked in right now. Two, with people like Gunless and the history of Scump and Formal, I think if they're losing early, I still think even though it looks like they're all best friends and everyone's getting along, if they start losing, that is when things can unravel. So I think if they're winning, it's like a band-aid. Everything will be great. They'll all be all smiles and they'll dominate. And I think the biggest thing since Crowder's team's not here. Since FaZe is not here, and they are the clear favorites, I think Chicago's got to win. And you can't start it off with a loss to Patty P because that's just negative vibes right out the gate. Yeah, I, think it's a big I think it's a big first match for them, honestly. It's, it's a good talking point. Like, what if Chicago doesn't win London? 
Is, they is that, is that going to affect? They should, they should is, win London. They, they absolutely should. Let's let's say, for example, Empire ends up winning. Does that shake Chicago's confidence in themselves at all? You know what I mean? Tell me it won't. They it's can all it's it got won't. it. They can all say it'll be fine, but I know I won't all be sunshine and roses. So oh, I'm they, excited. They, they, yeah, I don't know. They I'm need excited. to win. All right, so that's some good talking points for Group A. Now we're throwing up Group B to talk about these round one match- matchups in this part of the bracket. We got Paris versus New York in the top part, and then we got London, the home stand uh, heroes, I guess, versus Toronto. So, dude, when this you guys group, go? man. Oh my gosh. Ah, oh, dude. Like again, if you show me this, like pre Minnesota, I, I just. I think it's way different. Like I, I think London beats Toronto, and that's just due to the the crowd. I think Toronto is a solid team. Like that could be one that goes all the way in map five, but I I, I still go Toronto or um London. Yeah, oh, yeah I feel but that way. Paris, too. Yeah. New York, like Paris just was two and zero. Like they they just played exceptionally well. Um, New York might have been the worst team there. Yeah, like a long yeah. weekend, which is which is crazy, but like they might have been. Because it's hard to say Dallas because Dallas obviously played the two top teams. New yeah, York, York might have been. They, they might have looked. They might have looked the worst coming out of coming out of the event. Did they play each other? No. 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 They couldn't have because that that would have mm-hmm. that would basically defeat the entire purpose of no, it's a, set it, up. It's a good point. New York looked um, London bad. Beach. Um, yeah. So okay. So New York lost to the phase in London. In London. Like, yeah. Like, I think I. I almost want to go like Paris. But I'm going Paris. I'm, I'm going Paris going too. Paris. I, I, yeah. I mean, for now, what what do we have to go off of? All yeah. we have to go off of is launch weekend. Like, like picking New York, yeah. I feel like you literally would be picking. You're like, I like what they did in Black Ops Four. Like, yeah. if you're yeah. going off of this title, like, I feel like how could you not pick Paris right now? Yeah, I, I, and, and I feel really like for me, you can kind of see the the competitiveness. And when we saw the subliners matches. Did they really look that competitive? Uh, they had like a good dom. Yeah, well, uh, they beat Faze in the dom, right? Yeah. Which was, they they played us well in the dom. In the first yeah. hard point, they played us close. Yeah, it was yeah. close ish. But like, is that New York enough? York is to... obviously better than they looked without question. Yeah, but right. Right now, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm picking Paris. Ben Paris looked good. I'm yeah, saying no, like, they, they did. Talk about these hey, teams York, going in. Like, they, let's go to let's go to Doug Sensor Martin's Twitter, bro. Like, they they he's breathing down their necks, man. He is uh, inside of yeah. them. He is <laughs> penetrating their brains, dude, with the stuff he's been tweeting. Like, look at this. Feel really confident with my progress as a player going into London. I promise you guys, I'm going to give the game everything I have. I'm a man on a mission, and I want my ring. That sounds like somebody going for a goddamn starting lineup spot. Like, if you start out 0-2, you come out here and get 0-2. Bob, Doug Sensor, Martin, he's in the lineup. New York, to me, probably is not, like but... the team yeah, yeah, that not, but... map one just feels so important to them. Like, it feels like if they don't win like a map one, they're like... I think they all just sort of look at each other like it's happening again. Like, yeah. you know what point. I mean? Well, like, talk- the confidence isn't there. Talking about New York, Zuma looks absolutely amazing. Yeah. Where Where is everyone else? There's superstars on this roster. Who got fried? An accuracy? Or an accuracy? Uh, accuracy some, somebody got fried. Yeah. No, none of them. them got fried. None of them no, really played that well. Like a one yeah. besides uh, uh, Zuma. Zuma, oh, uh, just like watching his POV, like good, he yeah. was on fire, and no, no one Lamar else had was a really. Point, Lamar had a point six nine though. Like, that's that's yeah, tough. That yeah, tough. they all. But I mean, they all didn't play well yeah, though, yeah, collectively. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's no one there. I mean, yeah, Zuma to point nine yeah, was the highest. So not the Katie's everything, but like. Yeah, it tells a good story. Well, yeah, just, those, those no one just no one so played good. well. Yeah. yeah, they just they just didn't come out. Well, your team did kind of body bag them though. Well, especially map four was map four the one where Simp went like 112. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was a bad my point. Yeah, I love how Chris is like, yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. super nonchalant yeah. about it. Yeah, I don't know. Like, Katie's are not. Really good. I I thought Tommy has a really good idea of yeah. what's going on, and the rest of them didn't, and they need to figure it out quickly, or else they're going to get bopped by Paris. Straight Th- Tommy's up. play style fits this game very well, too. Mm-hmm. I like, like, in the sense of, like, just the way he likes to take gunfights and the, like, the way he likes to take corners, he's going to be good at this game. And, like, I, I mean, he's been pretty good for a while now, so I think he'll be good. I just think that Paris team is so underrated, man. Like, I, I still think, like... Even people, after going 2-0, like, they're still underrated? Well, yeah. yes, because, like, I... I they didn't beat like Chicago or you know what I'm yeah, saying, so I don't I think you, people are gonna you. give them like, their their credit. But I just feel like last year Kismet was really good all year. Mm-hmm. He was never talked about. 
Zed was really good all year. He was never talked about. Yeah. Then well, Zed, that that one Zed well, is he, an interesting he, one. He why? was so inconsistent. Like oh yes, no, there he's was never been like a consistent where... slayer. I do agree with that. He but, would start off games like. 14 and one and then you'd look yeah. again and he'd be like 16 and 16 and you'd be like <laughs> what happened what? Yeah. like what just happened but no, yeah. he is, he's definitely no, he's, he's solid there, but he's yeah. always been solid and then, then mm-hmm. like you look at dens i think dens has always been solid like like throughout his entire career like he hasn't had his shining moments like here and there because obviously like he's been in t- some tough situations but i don't think dens has ever been Not bad good. like yeah. you know what i mean and then say look For at shocks sure. i thought shocks was great yeah. Every time I've ever played against Shox or or like seen him play, Shox is always the mind freak superstar mm-hmm. playing really well. Yeah. And then you have Luca. Happy, bro. I don't know much about Luca except for from last year, very briefly when I watched him. But I mean, I've watched him in scrims. I watched him play. Like he's an explosive talent too. I I think this roster has a lot more talent than people think, and it's just because like they've never been the super superstar on their team, and all of them have never really been on that like that dominant roster where it gets a lot of talk, you know, like For I sure. really don't think like, I feel like shocks has been surrounded with people that like, just didn't really help him out in world war two shocks could have used some help. You know what I'm saying? And he didn't really have it. Like, I just feel like, I don't know. It's funny though. Cause I left wanting to gas Kismet too. Cause I know a couple months months months, but like KD wise though, like it was Dens and shocks, bro. They like a 1.18 yeah. and a 1.14. Like yeah. they were the two lead players. Like Kismet oh, was right behind them, but Dens, Dens has to be thrilled. Cause think of Dens. We, we talked his year last year was absurd, right? Like, bench mm-hmm. super sub back in the starting lineup then he was playing the icr role and like we know the icr role was kind of hard last year it was like a weird AR. it was role. hard unless uh, you were like octane well it, it, yes it, it, it wasn't sucked, like right? it wasn't like a really back. normal it, it just was like a different ar role kind of whereas mm-hmm. this game maybe it's a little bit more back to back to kind of standard ar role and more traditional and he's, i mean my, uh, mind free though even with like the buzzo teams in like world war ii they always had impressive wins they always had impressive like Top six, top eight finishes. Reciprocity last year. You have a core from then. They got top, you know, top four, top six multiple times. Same with Enigma Six, where you're pulling Kismet from. So like, and Kismet oh, they're probably dude. The, you I even, Kismet. I even think about the fact, dude. Think about like the. I don't know if this is in their minds at all, but I feel like it'd be in mine. Like, they got roasted a bit. Remember, because it was Mind Freak one. Like what? They got to the final of like two amateur tournaments in a row, but then the one that qualified for champs, they failed. Remember, they didn't go to yeah. champs. And like yeah. it was a really big deal because those guys were like they were kind of known for their champs runs and like always making champs. So you got to think they it's got to be a little bit of a chip on the shoulder there. I would think this year. Right? I mean, there's yeah, that's wild. I didn't even think about be. that. Yeah, that was wild. Yeah, I, I remember we were like when we heard how the seating worked. It's like, oh, they'll be fine. They just have to get top thirty two. Yeah, but like none of the other tournaments matter. Remember then then they got bopped out like top sixty four and everyone was like, oh. Yeah. I mean, I like, sometimes, worse, yeah. sometimes those those brackets just get crazy and like pressure's yeah. on, and you lose that first map and a best of three or five. You know, it's just it yeah. gets weird. So that's got to put a little chip on your shoulder. I think going yeah. into the next year, like not even getting the champs the year before. So, so who are you guys? All right, so Group A, uh-huh. I think we all think Dallas, Chicago is going to get out. So what yes. about what about B? You guys go London and then I'm Paris? going London, Paris, London, Paris. So yeah, I'm going London, Paris too. I wanted to talk a little bit more about Ultra's situation. Is, is mm. Bants playing? Is well, that, is that like a confirmed thing? I don't know if it's confirmed. I saw a Reddit post saying is Metals benched based on the, a tweet, which I don't even think I opened the tweet. But they were trying. I guess the the question was, is Bant starting? Has anyone, Chris, have you seen scrims that have seen like a new roster, if you're allowed to say, or I, is there I anything official? Them. No, I haven't played against them. I, right. I haven't even talked to Classic or anything about it, to be honest, but I'm not too sure. All I've heard I wouldn't be shocked, about though. Bant I mean, they, is that he's very good at this game. From like, I imagine, like yeah. people yeah. that have played against him and with him. So I, I've heard very good things. I don't know too much about medals in this game, to be honest. I didn't really get to watch too much of their matches. But He was their best player. Yeah, He was, but so... He, he had some wild moments. I mean, so. I thought Metals was disgusting last year. I thought he was a very good player last year, very explosive, so I don't know. Isn't it crazy, though, thinking about, like, dude, we were talking about Bant. It, I know it's been, like, three years now, but, yeah. like, it's mm-hmm. been a while since we've talked about Bant's being, like, one of the best players in the game. I missed that. I, I, don't, I always liked Bant's. Mm-hmm. I, no, I, I just put a... I, but I wait, 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 where was that MVP run? Sorry, sorry Joe. Where was uh, that? Lack where, of three. No, wait, no, no, no. The one... Was no, that? that was, was zero, it, one What was MVP. the year where... Or no, what was the year where they were really? It was World War Two, right? Where it was in Birmingham, I think. Oh, where, yeah, yeah. where like they weren't very good, but then Bant had like the tournament of his life in London. Didn't mm-hmm. he have that like a crazy event where he just shit on everyone? They got to the grand yeah. final. Of LG. Was yep. that was yeah. that Birmingham? That was Birmingham. Yeah, it was yeah, Birmingham. yeah, yeah. But Bant was nuts, man. Yeah, I remember was. he he like he was like average all year, but nuts at that event, if I remember correctly. Sorry if I'm misquoting that, but 
Oh, yeah, yeah. So maybe get him from the London crowd, dude. I it, maybe that. Do you think that comes into play too? This is actually worth talking about. Like, do you think that would that matter at all this early in the game? We are still trying to set a roster. Do you put in the UK boy headed well, home to play in London? My my point was just that, like, again, if this was the old format, we know Toronto would be moving their roster all over the place. Some of the discussions that I've had with like people around Toronto is that they're it seems like their org is just ready to they're making most of the decisions right like it's there's some like loony methods talk but for the most part kind of what the top is saying is is how it's going so Hmm. like again i i just think if this was the old format and this was just league matches we'd be like cool we're trying out bands like yeah it just seems like they are 100 percent into we have 10 players on this roster people are getting their shot i think it's weird it is medals but no, that's that's, what, that's the way it's rocking. That's what yeah, Dominic yeah. Uh, Dominique or whatever said to me at the uh, at the airport when I joked with Bance. I wasn't listening to him because he wasn't a starter. She she goes, "We have ten starters." That's what she said. Yeah, like they they starters. truly believe like they're gonna rotate people in. I don't know if it's just like a mental thing that I don't like try it. to keep them motivated. But I that, think it's a mistake. That's the way it seems. It could be, but like we've never Do seen. You guys it before. disagree? I, don't know. I think no, it's no, dumb. No, I, know. I I think I think you're right. How do you swap someone out already? Not, if that's if this is, if this is real and we see Bant start, like what? You don't even I give your it's players the old a format. It's not a big deal. This format's weird. It's really right? weird. It is. Like, yeah. did they perform poorly enough to already warrant a change like that? What if Bant comes no. in and fries and they get top two or something? Yeah, but like, what are you flipping a coin on your roster every tournament? <laughs> like, I don't know. But do you think there's any merit that I said like the, to start like? He's always that been good be. in London. He's yeah. like a British no. player. Like, it's a good that, talking I mean, point. Like He's going to be gassed up. Well, like, this could be something as simple as like a language barrier that really affected yeah. them with medals. Yeah. We talked be. about it before. Be. That's true. Yeah. But do you think L- the London crowd will even be behind him to be realistic? If he goes on a run. Like like I'm saying, like, no, that's a good question. It. That's yeah. a good question. Yeah. Do you even think they'll be behind him? Just well, not against London. Not against London. Not against London, no. But again, do you think that so do you think Toronto will so be my point makes no sense then, the second or third favorite team here in the sense of that? Like they probably, might be, they could probably be third because be if he played because yeah, yeah I was there in Chicago. Trey's there too in New York. So that's what I mean. Like True. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if they're gonna I don't latch really know onto if the that individuals. Even technically even matters. Hmm. Like I don't know. That's a know. good talking point. I don't know. Okay. But, so yeah. we kind of covered group we'll A. A couple days. Yeah. <laughs> Cover group A, group B predictions. Are we both or are we all going with uh Paris and London? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm going to go. go I York? think I'm going to go London, New York. Right. Ooh. I think okay. I'm going to do it. You're going. And, and it's because of the Taking format the risk of the on. tournament. I think New York, they may lose the first one. I think, though, if, back. like, say London goes 2 0, that 1 1 match, say it's between, like, New York and Paris, I, I think when you rematch, it's tough to beat someone twice. Um, it just yeah, is, it really especially is, especially in the same weekend. Uh, vetoes will change. Uh, so I'm going to. I'm going to go London. It's not that I wasn't impressed with, with Paris. I just think this format helps. No, I, I don't think it's crazy play. at all. I, don't think, it's crazy I, I all. think where you can play someone twice and, and sort of learn. So I'm, I'm going to go. I think picking London, anyone at this point is like not that too crazy to think about. I'm excited. Yeah, this group. They this can't play as bad, as bad as they did launch weekend. That's uh, no, they, they'll they'll definitely come out stronger. One thing sure. one thing I want to touch on before we go into, you know, who has the most pressure as a team to, to come out and win this, which we'll touch on. But I'm excited to see if teams switch up how they're doing vetoes to throw sort of like curveballs tournament format when you're when you have an elimination match on the line <laughs> and you get smoked in the first series and you're not you know are you're gonna throw in a map that you're not used to playing? I, I predict that in a second if if teams match up again for the second time, it's going hmm. to be dramatically different. And I'm excited to see some different maps because well, Chris, who do you think was gonna win in B? By the way, sorry, we did in Chris. B? Yeah, no, I'm in B. I think it's gonna be London. And uh-huh. then I think I, I just wanted I want Paris London because I want to see that matchup. So I, I think right. I'm going Paris London. I really want to see mm-hmm. the Paris London rivalry cool. begin here. Yeah. Like right now. The two EU teams. But yeah. to talk to Teep's point about the vetoes, the only reason why I don't think you'll see anything drastically different, maybe in searches or something, is just like the hard points, no one's gonna pick Hackney. Period. There's no one's gonna do it. I, I think with the the one side on Hackney, I think teams are just scared even, to pick it right now. Even if like you don't think it Unless matters if they get shit stomped, shit stomped I'm, on a cave, they're they're not gonna go with something else. If, I, if you I, play I, the same I mean, team at again, this point. 
It's about I, that time. I, I totally get the I point. Agree. It's side pick. It's very important. But, but I <laughs> just the, the permentals. No, I agree. But <laughs> I think right now, the way most players view Hackney Yard Hardpoint, oh, they have coalition all they want. Yeah. It's they not just necessarily. It before it starts type yeah. thing. Not yeah. And the thing is, is if you really think about it as a player, do you want to be down 85 to 20? In, in the first and like right. basically like you know what i'm saying like you're kind of accepting that l if you, now you can't screw up you know what I'm saying? Sure. you can't screw up because if you do a good point you lose so it's like i just feel like a lot of players right now are scared of that map for that reason which makes mm -hmm. sense so I, I just threw that's i don't so, think we'll see that right so now think, maybe later in the game i think maybe like s and people or, understand or it more but yeah, like a yeah. team, a team gets really good at flipping it and then pulls it out. Like that'd be yes, kind of but I think it's still a little bit early where I still think teams view that map as coalition. Right. You win. Gotcha. You know what I mean? So, uh, but we'll see. I, I, no, I want to see that yard played. Yeah. I love watching that map, so I want to see it played. But we'll see. Might no, not be it. Good like I, we didn't see a lot of Petro. I mean, it could be Petro. You yeah. see more of this event. We <laughs> we saw a lot of Azir Cave and a, and a lot of a lot of gun runners. So maybe it's Petro. That's yeah, the maybe. difference. Mm -hmm. Like good yeah. point. Cool. Like, like if I'm the the gorillas, I'm not playing. Playing. I don't. I don't want to play Chicago on Cape because they look great all weekend. Yeah. So I. I don't and know. They are players too, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So. I'm excited. It'll be interesting. We'll see how the vetoes go. If see if they switch up S and D's stuff like that, it's gonna be a good potential. I feel like. All right. Which team has the most pressure to win? Uh, I feel like we're all kind of be gonna be on a similar page for this one. It's got to be Chicago, right? I, I, my pick is Chicago. Yes, it, be. for the for the reasons I said earlier. Or is it Dallas? I still, I still don't. I still don't fully. They can do as many campaign episodes as they want. They can say to T two P as many times as they want. They can stream all they want. I still am not convinced. This is not a fragile China bowl being held together. Like the last still, cannon in a sense. <laughs> yes, like I just I'm not convinced yet. So I think them succeeding early is massive. I really mm -hmm. think. That combined with FaZe not being here and them being the number one team right now, they need to come in and smoke people. Well, they may not smoke people. They need to come in and win. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, I, I would say Chicago. I don't think Dallas at all. And the reason being, maybe to themselves, obviously, they want to win. But I think them doing so terrible at Minnesota kind of like threw all the eyes off of them. Yeah. And they have now no target on their back like they did. They really put a target on their back before Minnesota, man. Yeah. All their content, totally. all yeah. the trash talk, they wanted all it. the scrims, all the Reddit posts about how they don't lose scrim counts and all that stuff. They were talking the talk and like they had the target on their back. I think after they them not really performing, I think that kind of took the eyes off them a little bit. I was watching the, like another stream, but like I forget the stream I was telling you before. And like they're winning maps against teams that like they probably should be. And people are talking about how they're onliners. You know what I'm saying? So I don't really think they're walking into this event like, yeah, we're going to win this. Like, we must win it. I think it would help, like, obviously, if they go 0-2 here or they don't make it out of groups, yeah, maybe you see some warning signs. So there's pressure to do well. But I don't think they have the most pressure to win. I think Chicago just being the clear-cut favorite right now, I think, like, most people are watching this event like Chicago's going to win. I think London, obviously, having the home crowd, you want some pressure on that. But I feel like most people are saying that Chicago is going to win. So if they don't walk out with a win, I think most pressure. You know what I'm saying? That'd be a big, I think very, London, very big letdown. L London's probably second for me, I'd say. Yeah, yeah I, that's I, the I point I was going to bring too. up. I don't, I don't even think Dallas is second. I think London being the home team, they want to win in front of their home crowd. Their home crowd's going to be, this is going to probably be well, the craziest well, crowd ever. So like, it's not just that. Win. When's the last time they won, Chris? Like, just, well, just most the European happened. team, UK players. Like, when's the last time they won? Took my well, point, you punk. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Joe sorry. was waiting. Sorry, <laughs> Joe. Joe, go ahead. Take the point, Joe. I just I just hand delivered it to yeah, you, man. Yeah. You, you, you take this away, Joe, because I'm not uh, too sure. London's that. it for me. They're number one. Uh, it's time. Um, Splice got second. Epsilon got second. Whoever T beat at Gfinity 2 um, and 1, second, second, T beat 2 teams it is it is a hundred percent time um you you just talk about you go into this year maybe you don't have zero but as a to build a london team you have every pick that you could ever want you have the team that you want you have the coaching staff that you want you now have the crowd behind you it is time for 
the UK players to get back out on the map. Like, what has it been since 2017? And that was number one. And Jared's um, British now, basically, at this point. So. Right. Well, that's something I'm saying more from, like, a, a enough, European right? side. Like, a European No, no, I know, side, I know, right? I know. But, like, he's just, he's British now. Like, he's been I, on I these mean, teams with all these they UK have players. Had three second-place runner-ups in London. Um, obviously, Chicago with, like, how important that team is, yada, oh. yada, yada. We get it. Did that place, imagine that place if it's Chicago London final. But, yeah, that oh it, to me, awesome. it's time to, like, hey, we are here. Um, we are going to compete all year. It, it, to me, it just has to be London. The pressure is there mm-hmm. for the Ravens. If they don't <laughs> win here, when the hell are they going to win? Well, that's what I was going to say. They get London how twice, many, at least. <laughs> is it London, too? <laughs> yeah. On that London roster, how many championships do they have? I know Jurd is one. That's right? it. Is that it? That's it. Because I know Scraps and Rated have been itching for that pass. Yeah. Like they, I mean, they, they, they are real close. So they close, are real close, yeah. yeah. So many times. Like, and I know I've talked to Maddie a lot. I think Maddie's a great guy. I think he's a super talented player. He wants that championship more than... More than most. You know what I'm saying? He wants it so bad. He, yeah. he puts so much work in. I know my assistant coach, RJ, he coached, he was the head coach of FaZe last yeah. year. He talks very highly of Maddie. All he ever talks about is how that guy so gets annoying. on and it's straight business. He wants to get like better. There's nothing, there's nothing more to it. If you're complaining in scrims, he gets annoyed. You know what I'm saying? Like he wants to get better. He, it's kind of like the slasher attitude. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like he gets on, he wants to get better and he wants to win. And like, I think for a player as talented as he has been, for so long now and him just continuously falling short i think this would be yes the time to sh- like to step up and i would love to see it i think it's deserving for a player like him and the rest of them to really to, to take this next step so i would like to see them win i would say they're probably my second place team with the most pressure to go back to our point but yeah the, i think this would this would be huge for them yes yeah really great points i you guys kind of hammered it home for me for sure it's chicago yeah, or it's london uh, they call uh, me the hammer bro <laughs> do they who, who says that Joe, he calls me the hammer. Oh, wow. You guys are so cute <laughs> together. I'm jealous. I was going to make a really bad joke, but I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> not on hard points. Yeah, okay. not on hard points. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I guess just to touch Title on... Didn't help you there. Uh, just to touch on Dallas a little bit more. There is pressure on them for sure. I, I feel like it comes to a certain point where it's like, how long, how many failures would it take for that roster to to start to go on tilt, to start to have those doubts, to... I think it's going to be a little while. So I do think there is pressure. I think they're going to be very, very upset if they don't come out and have a better performance versus like a like a Chicago, for example, because they got kind of uh, overshadowed, I guess. And yeah. you know they don't like that. So I think that's a team that's going to have the passion coming in for sure. Uh, London crowd. If London doesn't take it here, like I am scared for that roster going into the other tournaments. Yeah. Uh, it's a really good point. So team. Team. It just yeah. hit me that I tried to say a bowl in a China shop earlier and just said China bowl. <laughs> <laughs> You're a mess today. It's all good. We're trying to keep it rolling. <laughs> dude, when I said it, I was like, that didn't sound just, right. Just dude. keep it going. I, I thought that didn't sound right. But dude, I, oh, I told you I'm so out of it, bro. Oh. It just, I just hit me. I was like, I didn't say it right at all. Oh, all God, right, man. <laughs> Moving on to the next topic. We went on to the teams that had have the most pressure, the most target on their back going in. I guess now we'll go into individual players. Uh, you know, we, we got a initial taste of what to look for from each player, this uh, each team at the launch weekend in terms of standout performances. If If individual players have a bad performance at this one, who has a target on their back to eventually well, get subbed out? Well, I think it's less about individuals yeah because i think it's hard for us to know that it's more yeah. about just what teams you think is there the most risk i guess that's how i view it like the most risk of maybe a sub actually coming in like mm-hmm. do we think do we think with all the tweets from sensor in new york struggling if they go oh and two like is there a chance we see him with all the players on toronto um with yeah. london having a good We're sub like, one, i guess yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah there's I, I think there's a lot of different things here i guess I, i'm just curious to hear your guys thoughts on like who you think realistically like if they get shit on there could be a change. I I think one for me that I I noticed like right away with w- was is London right like it's okay. really like, if you look at the subs you have Shawnee and Mad Cat like Shawnee was on reciprocity mm-hmm. last year Mad Cat has just been waiting 
Uh, Sean is someone I thought would be a starter, honestly. Yeah, I mean, and Mad Cat has been has been waiting, and Mad Cat has won Witchard. He was on that Splice team that won a title. Oh, um, in his ear already. <laughs> right. So, I think like the players on London, there is some pressure there. Where like if you don't win in London, like what is yeah, what's the ceiling for this team? That's what everyone wants to sort of figure out because I, I think this team does will it does and will have great teamwork and great chemistry but the question has always been with like red reserve you know splice in the past this london team now when it comes down to the nitty-gritty you're playing chicago you're playing atlanta you're playing dallas is the talent there to slay in hard points to slay in domination that has always been the question mm-hmm. and i think it still to a a point could be um, so that that's just where it is for me. Okay. But do you think now, do you think with what you just said, does Shawnee or Mad Cat add to that slang if they don't have it? I think Dylan could. I know we haven't seen Dylan in a, in a long time. I, I, I still believe Dylan is the one of the most talented players out of that country. I, I do. Like, he's had a very unfortunate like series of events for him recently, too. He hasn't really been able to showcase like right. what he really is capable of. So I definitely, I agree with you. I think Mad Cat's In Dylan, good. I mean Mad Cat, not Dylan yeah, I know, on I the team already. Yeah, just, I yeah, it's just for yeah, the yeah. viewers. I mean Mad Cat. I thought Dylan has always been an incredible talent. Okay. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it seems sort of like he's been a part of maybe like one of the people people don't want to team with because of like past issues, maybe a past ego. But when you spend a year or two sort of on the sideline, that teaches you... you. That that humbles yeah. you very quickly. Yeah. So, and the, 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 I think like Shawnee, I love Shawnee. I think he's a great player. I think he could e- easily be a starter. I just don't see where he would step in to really. Well, I think I would have said. I think I would have said maybe Wuskin, but then Wuskin was their best player. Wuskin played yeah. great. Yeah. yeah well, that, that was the thing for me. It was like Wuskin are rated right. That's where Mad Cat immediately fills in. But Wuskin had a had a great event. Right. Um, yeah. he, was, he was really good. Uh, okay. So. That's that's my that's where my focus is is on London. Uh, other than that, teams that I guess we're kind of predicting to do poorly or more poorly than other teams, uh, players on Seattle, you think they're touchable for their starter spots? Probably not. No. Uh, unless there's a trade. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, unless there's like a trade. trade yes. or, yeah. But like uh, sub, in no. terms of subs, yeah, no way, right? So, and then, yeah, Clint, you kind of touched I, on it. New York. Oh, you Crowder has one. Go. Well, am I... Am I correct? Is Blast? I could be wrong here and sound like an idiot, but wh- who is Blast Vallon? He's LA. on the Bayless, right? Yeah. Okay, that's what yeah. I thought. Yeah, that's, I, that's a good one. I forgot about that. I, yeah, that's, I, that's I mean, a good one. Paris I, is another one, too. We can get to Paris yeah, later, but yeah. Because they have the Toronto setup, kind of, but I think they do, right? But regardless. Yeah, well, they have Brezzy and Phantoms yeah. on the bench. Brezzy yeah. was okay. a beast last year. But I, I don't know, man. I, I said this, I think, in one of our older episodes, and I'll say it again. I think Gorillas showed up at Minnesota Rocker. I think I, like at the event, I think they played well. I thought they did way better than I thought they were gonna do. <laughs> Thank you for the input, Copper. And but at the same time, like if the Gorillas don't show up consistently, you know what I'm saying, and they do go through a rough patch, Blastful is should be a starter. Not on this. I'm not saying on this roster. Just he should general. be a starter in the league. He's a very he talented will be, player. At some point this year, he'll he ha- be starting. Yes, him. like I would not be surprised to like. Having him on your bench, I think he is a real threat to take someone's spot because he's yeah. very good. And not only is he a good slayer, uh, I don't know too much about him as a teammate, so I don't want to go into that topic, but he's a great search player. Yeah. That is huge. How many times have we seen a team be made, like either make or break by S D, right? So like him just being on that bench. If that team does struggle, I feel like he's automatically in. Like yeah. I, I, I'm at especially, least I, for me that would be a no-brainer. So especially I don't know. Especially like I don't think it's too bold of a prediction to expect that LA Gorillas isn't going to be super consistent in respawn. So, so to have someone like that step in that you can kind of rely on for search, a different like personality, yeah. a different teammate, a different. A, he's not going to come in and not slay, right? For sure. So say that team doesn't get along, they do have players on the team that can argue. You know what I'm saying? With all the personalities yeah. on it. If that's something that happens immediately, you snap your fingers, Blastful's a new person, a new vibe, just like 100 Thieves last year. You had Preston for Pharaoh. Like, if not that Pharaoh was bad, it was just a new player. You know what I'm saying? And, and yeah. look what happened. So, like, that's I a think good that of, is uh, the what? pressure yeah. of having him on your bench. I think Blastful yeah. is the go-to guy this year to find a spot, and I still can't believe he's not. So, like, that's yeah, why. Yeah. It's a good one. I, I, I got a good story for you. In Minnesota, we were, uh, yeah. myself and Nameless, so I think it was either after rehearsal day or day one, 
Uh, but we we got some late dinner, had a, had a couple of drinks, and we were meeting some people. There was a lot of like team owners, GMs, this and that. And yeah, I, I think we met the the GM of of Gorillas, and we told him to his face, we're like, like you are going to start blast within a month or two. Like it is going <laughs> to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but that is before we saw the gorillas play, and maybe now I I Dude, wouldn't say that because they yeah were I mean they looked a lot I think they looked a lot better yeah. than most of us expected. But I, I I think we looked at him and we're like, <laughs> you, you're gonna start Racine like tomorrow. Like <laughs> he should start this weekend. Why Ooh. isn't he? So I think uh, everybody on that team should be a little bit worried that Blastful's on their bench. Like that's uh that should keep you motivated. Yeah, I think like a veteran team like New York, they're probably safe for, you know, at least yeah. a couple run throughs of tournaments. Uh, Paris, I feel like we might be having this conversation. However, at launch weekend, they looked phenomenal. So you think like, you know, that needs yeah, to be Yeah, I, I don't think time. yet, right? Yes, right. exactly. I don't but, think yet. You know, I'm just, my talking point better. is like looking at the roster and the substitutes, if they come into this 0-2, you know, we actually probably take that conversation a little more serious, but they look 100%. great, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it's like you give that. yourself give yourself a little breathing room when you win. Yeah, Phantoms and Brezzy, sure. yeah. I mean, great players, right? I, I thought Phantoms had a great year last yeah. year, and Brezzy had an even better year last yeah, year. Sure. Yeah, I mean, so, and and maybe yep. that's around the discussion where he's the only French player in the league. Yeah, Do you pull him out for Paris type thing, right? Mm. Sort of what we talked about with bands for Toronto. Yeah, so that's a good point. That'll be interesting. Well, sure. Do you guys want to have the final topic yeah. conversation now, I which I think is I still I still is I interesting. Do. All right, so I, I'll pose this one then. I've seen it discussed on Twitter. We all talk about number of championships, who's got the most, who can catch who. Do we count these events as championship wins, or is the only thing we count as a championship this year champs? Oof. Uh, I, it's a tough I, I, one to I start with. In my opinion, with. first, you want, because it's, it's, it's very tough, because I'll just tell you this, the, the way I see it. It's very tough because I find, this is our tournaments now. It's just different. Like These are our tournaments. But at the same time, they're not seated. They yeah. mimic league matches. Four of the teams aren't there. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things, but that's all we have. So if we right. don't count them, are we only counting champs? And that's maybe then we just have to say it's a new era. I, I don't know. Uh, I, it's tough. For me, it's like, how do, you, how do you measure it in terms of, I don't know, greatness or whatever? I, I think you, you have to create like a, like a line, like new era. You either count these as, as individual like tournament wins or, you know, we had our majors from our, the previous era, right? Before CDL, do two of these uh, count as like a, do three of them count as like a major? You know what I'm saying? I don't think they well, hold the same weight as wager, uh, sorry, majors did before because it, for those points, exactly. I don't think you can weigh them weird, the same though, way. If that's what you want to do though, then I feel like we might as well not count anything that's ever happened over this point and start fresh. Because how would not anyone ever any? catch anyone? No, like how would ever? No one's ever be able to pass. Well, someone. Like no one's ever be able to catch someone. No one's be able to pass someone. We might as well count the CDL as its own new beast. Well, I get, like, what, no you're, I get ever, what you're saying. How are you yeah. ever gonna? How are you ever gonna? How catch do you measure the two? Uh, like, I get that. You, but you, you can't just negate it now? either. Yeah, I know. I know I it's very tough. <laughs> Yeah. If you look at new players, though, like some of the younger players that are on the come up, right? That have just won championships. You can even use a player from my team, like Sam P. Won two last year. He'll never, ever ever catch scump or crim six right in the sense of say crim were to retire today you know what i'm saying he'll never have a chance no one will ever get once a year yeah, yeah, and yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. if he wins yeah. once a year you know what i'm saying so it's like right but by that but, logic don't we have to sort of start over then but so, okay but if you go if you go back back in the day though if you go back in the day people were counting like i'm pretty sure at least wasn't like frag cup yep. oh um, yeah I'm up, it's all it's yeah. all we had but okay, but it's all we had. This is all we have now. Right, correct. You know what I'm saying? See, so and these are. It's not like the competition is easy. This is the hardest competition wait, in the world. Like, winning, the winning now. I don't care if it's eight teams. I don't care if Phase is not here. Chicago's not here. Does any team that's hot at the moment's not there? If one of those teams are not there, and say you win this one, and you beat Chicago in the finals, like, you know what I'm saying? Or you play Chicago and you win, or Chicago wins. That is more impressive than winning UMG South Carolina. Hundred percent. You know yes. what I'm saying? Like yeah. the competition now. From being a player when I was 14 to being 25 now, it is ridiculously so much more ahead. I'm I mean, so like, you got it. When you say it like this, I think like you have to count it. 
like, that's why. It, but like, at, I see like both sides of it. I just feel like if frag cups and stuff back then was all that we had, which is true, and if you're going to count something like that as a championship, mm -hmm. I feel it's way more impressive to win one of these still. But I do see the other side of the argument. So I, I, I don't know. That's a tough one. To be fair, I, go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, sorry. No, you, 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 no. you haven't talked yet. <laughs> I've just been it's thinking, juicy. dude. I really don't know. I, <laughs> that's how I feel. That's how like, I, feel. I really, I, I feel like they have to count. Like, if you're telling me London yeah. beat Chicago Sunday in London for the and final, like, they're not going to go nuts. Like, that's not a championship. I feel like they, I, 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 I get it's to almost where you like, I feel like, it, I feel a, like it has to. Like, it has it, to. Otherwise, like, it, it's what, what we have. Yeah. It's what people measure have. everything on, right? You have it's to. It's almost like these would count as like a CDL tournament. Like, right? Like, I, I do think this is a new category. I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, We can still call champs a world championship. You can have your ring. But if you're tallying totals of tournament victories, this counts, right? I mean, it has to. It's like... I, I'm the I, I, as the commissioner, dude, is this my, is it my final it's, say? It's like, Someone's got to make a call on this. It's like, to me, it's I'll like, make a call. It's <laughs> like, when I compare it to other esports, CS players and whatnot, like, they have majors, and then under that is, like, minor tournaments. Right? When a there's there's so many CS tournaments, sometimes not all the best teams in the world are there. It's just the way it is, right? There's so much teams stay weak, but like just when the players else, hold the trophy, they hold the they hold the damn trophy. Yeah. They they do like they win on Sunday. They're not thinking in their back of their head like, ah, oh, Stralis wasn't here, Phase wasn't here, Liquid wasn't here. Like they're holding the trophy. They're they're fired up. Like they got through the gauntlet. Um, I I don't know where it sits. If we want to start a new category of like yeah, but even that, 2020. Ah, but that's so weird. Like, because it'd be weird. Like, we've always had like champs and everything else. If you, you're saying like do champs, majors, and another third thing, yeah, even that's weird because historically we've never had that third thing. So it's just weird. Why not it all it all gets weird for me when you talk like historically is when it gets so weird. For me. Well, it's, it's, it's just to me when I look at like old majors group play into a double limb bracket where you're playing yeah. a lot like. You can win this thing with four matches. The format to me is the one thing. Like we mm -hmm. played four matches on Friday. That's what does it for at, me yeah. at major events. You played four matches on a Friday yep. before. I um, I don't want to weigh them differently, but right. I for the the events the way they used to happen and how many matches and how much I feel like actual play time went grind. into it. It's like yeah. I would count this format as like half of that. People feel free to disagree. And I know, like I know people like, aren't going to take that a great way. What are you going like, to do? A graphic Crimson has 39.5 No, obviously. I don't know. No, <laughs> you wouldn't do that. You obviously classify them as, as yeah. you know, CDL wins. CDL that's probably going to happen but, but, but anyway. We all, we, so we counted like, as win, but then we all sort of in the back of our you head. Know, like, everyone in the community is going to consider these and weigh these differently. That's yeah. unavoidable, right? For me personally, I'd count every two of these wins as like a major win. Feel free to disagree. Put put your opinions in the comments. Reply to us. Yeah. You guys have your takes. I have mine. I think this is a great talking point because how do we weigh it? We can't throw away the history, right? We weighed things differently in the past when it, we only had online stuff to go off of. I don't know. I think that's yeah. the way I would do it. I, I and not I'm all the teams it. are there. I, I think it has to count. I just think it has to. Yeah, count. like as a full on major. I, I feel like it has to. Like it, it just just yeah. for like the historical part of it and storylines and narratives, like. I just feel like it has to. Otherwise, Wait. we can't. If we can't just have one win all year, it, that's just well, so. So okay, before we talked about this talking point, we had a great talking point about London. How none of them have won a championship except right. Her. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So you're yeah. gonna yeah. tell me, yeah, that if they were to win, like what Joe said, that they wouldn't be going nuts. But now you're gonna tell if we're talking about this and say we do say that uh, people say they don't count. These don't count. They're not championships. Whatever it is. So you're telling me scraps and all those guys just can't win this year. It's not possible. They, it doesn't like realistically yeah. they can't win. So even if they that, were to win London, it's not a win. So it's like that's why I, I you don't think not, Scraps is going to be standing up there in front of the crowd saying if he wins, saying like this is a, he's considering it a championship. Yeah. Period. So it's like I know there's going to be players that disagree or people in general yeah. that disagree. Like I just no, those are know. people defending history. No, I, 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 get get. I wholly get both sides of it, but I just I, I think I've decided that I think they have to. I, I but. I get that side of things, and obviously, I've all of us we've played in that history of side of things. You guys have won fourteen plus nineteen. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you guys do it at all. It's like, yeah. But at the same time, it's just <laughs> like <laughs> I don't. I, man, I don't know. I feel like you almost have to count them just because, like, I still think it's super impressive. And also relating something to like that, 
optic aw run they didn't win champs yeah but they won like not what what was it nine majors or something or nine tournaments whatever you call Mm -hmm. them it's like if a team say chicago or dallas were to go on a run this year and win like six you know what i'm saying like so they're all just was so this is league matches, bro. That doesn't count. Like, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like that's super impressive. I think For that's sure. insane. If somebody, you know, like, I feel like well, this, guys, I, I just love G Finity three because I count that as one, and I played five matches and yeah. I count it. So and you count yeah. it. I'm in. I'm that's counting. All you I'm, had, I'm in. That's, that's all what you had worried that me. Though. That's what worried me though when I heard that was one of my many concerns when I first heard the schedule how they're going to league matches. I was like, how would anyone ever? How would anyone ever catch Krem? How would anyone ever set their own new legacy? Like, that's why I meant, I said, like, it either, I, I literally felt like it needed to be a clean wipe where we are starting a whole different thing now. Yeah. Or, and, and there's going to be people, you already have to count it. There's going to be people too wondering, like, why aren't all 12 teams there? Remember, there was 27 weeks of league matches, right? So I'm pretty sure just what happened was when they made the change to the league, they got told, hey, we're doing this. Uh, but, or when they were doing the league matches, they were only told to be at the venue for two days. So, like, what we have, Clint, you and I did. It's like 13 matches on broadcast over two days. That's Anything more than that, it just can't happen. It's too long. So that's why four teams aren't there. I think that was part of it. Then yeah. logistics, uh, the logistics side of it with the teams, the fact that a 12-team bracket with buys and stuff is a nightmare. Yeah. Uh, the fact that, remember, we were talking about how hard it is to balance the hybrid model we have here of having the matchups make sense. Like, Imagine trying to do that with four teams in buys. Like, It would be even more nonsense. So. Yeah. There's reasons for it, but like, I, I, I'm kind of curious actually. Like, that's this is a conversation for another day, maybe at the end of the year. But I'm wondering, really, when we can think of ways to kind of perfect this model, this is what we're going to stick with this hybrid model, like ways to make it better. Cause it's obviously flawed, but it's, I mean, for a first shot at it, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. Better than league matches, right? Way yeah, dude, I mean, <laughs> yeah. That's the reason that I, that's why I think I'm so accepting of all the flaws and like yeah. all the maybe competitive integrity not being perfect with regards to how many times people. We're in the same group because I know it's not possible to get perfect, but I'm so happy it's not what it was. That I'm like, ah, who gives a shit? Like, let, let's go. <laughs> yep. Cool. Well, All right. I think the biggest talk, talking point there, and I want to, I really want to hear community feedback on this because I know people are going to be torn on like the whole championship. Maybe someone has a really good idea. Yeah, maybe, maybe we're not right. thinking of something. Obviously, we're doing this yep. on the fly. Uh, so yeah, let it, let us know. Give us your feedback on how you guys, as, as a community, rate this, or even if any pros watch this too. I'd love to just get input from all these different people. Obviously, you know, Joe and I have championships that don't weigh the same as they would now, yeah. like not even close. It's just very interesting to talk about. Everyone's gonna have a different POV on it, different perspective, and uh, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. It just is what it is now. Yeah. It's just you have to get used to it. I think that's Wait. what exactly that's what I think it comes down to. This is what we have now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's make it great. Yeah, uh, I know. I- I'm very excited. I think everyone's super stoked to see how the crowd is going to be in London. Uh, that's going to conclude this episode. Make sure you guys uh, follow the Hard Points podcast on Apple, Spotify, Google Play, and subdue each of our YouTube channels as well for future <laughs> episodes. Thank you guys for hanging out. See you in London.